Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer for St. John's Lutheran Church of McGuanago. It is Thursday, July 29th. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in trouble. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus invites you, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. Keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. Into your hands I commend my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. As I mentioned earlier this week, I spent a few days uh, this week, one day in person in Watertown for a joint mission council of our Wisconsin Synod. In the last two days, uh, I was in the office here um, attending the Senate Convention as a virtual delegate, um, something that they put in place months ago as they figured out ways to have a Senate Convention um, that 75% or so of the delegates uh, tuned in virtually. And while there were some advantages and disadvantages to that, the Senate's uh, Convention and business were able to be carried out. But for our point today, our Joint Mission Council on Monday started with a devotion based on these words from Mark chapter 5. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. And if I were to keep reading in Mark chapter 5, you know how that story goes. On the way, he is Jesus is encountered by a woman who had a terrible bleeding problem, and, and he winds up healing her and praises her for her faith. And because of the delay, while he is still talking, um, someone comes from Jairus' house and says, your daughter is, is actually dead, not just sleeping. And, and Jesus says, don't fear, just believe. And when they went in there to the house, Jesus says, the child is not dead, but sleeping. They laughed at him. And Jesus went there and taking her by the hand, says Talitha kum, which means little girl, I say to you, Get up or arise. And he says, don't tell anyone and give her something to eat. That's Mark chapter 5 in a nutshell. But where our devotion took us on um, Monday, and just for our brief consideration today, just the first part of that story, when Jairus went to Jesus and says, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live whether it's been your little daughter or your little son, your your parent or your grandparent, and certainly doesn't need to be to the point of death to go to Jesus on behalf of your loved one. How many times have you said to Jesus, come and help? And you think about how many ways Jesus could have answered this request, how many ways Jesus could have answered this prayer in your prayer, and it's an interesting way to read through different sections of Scripture and ask yourself the question, if I were God, if I were Jesus, how would I have handled this? And he went with him. See, there's any which number of ways that Jesus can do things, but he chose in this way. I mean, he could have spoke. He could have snapped his fingers. He could have just thought. He could have just said, she's well. But Jesus went with Jairus. And that presence of Jesus that goes with you. It leads me to, to two just thoughts, thinking about ministry in the Lutheran church setting. 
500 years ago, Luther took a stand at the Diet of Worms on the Word of God and said, I can do no other. But Lutherans have always seen the Word of God not just as something to be understood or delved into um, an academic exercise, but actually believe and actually confess that through that living and enduring Word of God, Jesus is actually with us, that he's actually present with us. This is part of the where two or three gather. No, Jesus Christ promises to be with us in a living word, uh, the, the real presence of the Christ. He promises to be located in water where the name of God is spoken in holy baptism. He promises to be located in bread and in wine together with his saving word, the, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Savior and mine that Jesus Christ promises to be with us in real, physical, tangible ways can't be uh, emphasized enough in a world where so often you feel alone and so often you feel afraid and so often you feel, where is God and what is God up to? This little section from Mark chapter 5, among other things, reminds us Jesus Christ promises to be with his people Second thing that leads to is then how it pertains to the ministry. As your called servants bring forth what? They bring forth a word. They bring forth the presence of Jesus in word and in real sacrament. And to think about that work, to touch lives and hearts and minds with the presence of Jesus Christ. Um, I return to it often, but the blessing of these devotions, the blessings of being able to engage with the real word of God um, day in and day out. This is, of course, just one avenue in which you can do that. But also then the presence to be with your pastors um, in a way where we can communicate and see one another and be with one another gathered around the one thing needful. God continued to bless us with opportunities to do so. God continued to bless the flock. Um, there's any which numbers of ways that Jesus can do his work. Jesus chooses time and again through word and sacrament to be with his people, decidedly to be for you and not against you. Now to put the human condition back on it, Jairus came because of a concern for his daughter. And to think about how much it meant for Jairus that Jesus went with him, not in some kind of schmaltzy way, but in a real way, an enduring way, a way that brought healing and hope. Uh, the same Jesus that goes with you, bringing healing and hope and salvation all to the glory of his saving name. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray. Grant us, Lord, the Spirit to think and do what is right, that we, who cannot do anything that is good without you, may by your help be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. In all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Holy name, oh, let me not be put to shame, nor let me be confounded. My faith, O oh Lord, 
be in your word forever firmly grounded. Bow down your gracious ear to me and hear my cry, my prayer, my plea. Make haste for my protection. Thank you.